Hey everybody and welcome to the channel. Well, you saw it in the title, Tenaz or not Tenaz. And I am really excited because I get to NAS. And I get to NAS with this guy right here. This is the Acer Store AS5404T. It's a four bay NAS. And if you're thinking, well, what on earth is he talking about? What's a NAS? I have no idea. You're in the right place, right? I'm going to cover everything. I'm going to cover the pros and cons of having a NAS. Uh, I'm going to talk about how it's set up, how it uh, works in your network, and most of all, what you can do with it, right? It's a powerhouse for sure. It can do a lot of things that are on my list, on my wish list, I should say. And one of them is securing my data when I'm dealing with clients. And uh, let's not forget remote access, right? So we're going to dive into the video and I'm going to cover all of that. Grab yourself a drink and and sit down and enjoy the video, right? Here we go. Now, this specific NAS is very easy to operate. You see this front panel right here? It's just a magnet click on. You can easily take it off just by moving it. And here you see our four bays. Let me bring the camera in a little bit closer so you can see it better, okay? Now, there's not really a lot to it. There's our uh, power button. We have uh, light indicators. It's not turned on right now, but we have four light indicators for the number of bays that have been loaded with drives. And of course, we have a network status. We have a panel that's attached with magnets. You can just simply take it off like this. And here we have our four bays for hard disk drives, right? Now, um, you don't have to populate all four of them. It kind of depends on the type of RAID solution you're going for. Um, if you just want to use a single drive and nothing else, of course, that's pretty risky because if the drive fails, you lose everything. But you can do that, right? Now, let's say you have one extra drive. You can have this as your main drive and this as a redundancy drive for that one. And then you have all sorts of RAID solutions, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, and I'll talk about all of that stuff, right? Now, how do you insert hard disk drives? Well, the four bays here are really easy to open. You just pull on this lever here, right, until that's up, and then you pull it forward and you pull out the tray. Looks something like this, right? Now you don't even need screws here. Well, not for the three and a half inch anyway. And the only thing you need to do is on the sides here, there are plastic clips. You remove them, you slide in your hard disk, right? You make sure that the port of the hard disk is at the back end, right? And then you take this and you just simply click it back in. And when you're doing that on camera, it doesn't want to do that. Yeah, there we go. And then what you do is you slide your hard disk back into the unit like this, you push it in, you push it down, you take your panel and you click it back in front. That's all there's to it, right? And then on the back, of course, what you need to know is this uh, two and a half uh, gigabit uh, port here, that's going to run the cable to your network, right? Then here you have additional USB drives for if you want to, let's say, attach an external hard disk drive that you want to load in. And here we even have an extra HDMI port, right? So yeah, it's a powerhouse, but it's also something that is very easy to understand, okay? Now let's dive into the specs, here we go. Okay, so uh, to NAS or not to NAS, that's the question. Well, one other question is what's a NAS, right? What does it stand for? What does it do? And how does that fit in your setup? So I guess we're gonna start off by talking about these things, right? So NAS stands for a network attached storage, and it's exactly what you think it is. It is a capacity of storage, right? Hard disk drives and so forth that are accessible uh, through your network. So if you have a, just a simplified completely, a box of hard disk drives that are linked into your network, then there you go, you have network attached storage. Now a NAS is so much more than that, and that's what we're gonna dive into in this video. But first let's get to the, uh, the acronyms and that kind of stuff, right? Okay, so second up, what's a network? Because if your NAS is gonna have a spot in your network, it's kind of important to understand how that works, all right? Now, for networks, it can be very, very complex. If you have a company with a thousand of employees, then you would have a schematic that would cover a wall, right? 
But what we're going to do is we're going to look at a very simple setup, a typical home setup, if you will. And I'm going to explain each element here. So you have a home right here and uh, in your home is a cable that's feeding uh, in uh, internet through your internet service provider, right? Now, is that a network? Well, it is, but it's an external network. It's a network of computers and servers, whatnot, outside of your house, but you're getting access to it through that internet cable. But with that cable alone, you can't really do a lot. So what you need is something that will connect to that cable and will allow you to have a wired connection to that network or a wireless connection to that network. And you need some technology to do so, right? So next up in line is your modem slash router. Now I say modem slash router because sometimes it's one on the same device. Sometimes people have a modem followed by a router. All of that's possible. But what you need to understand is a modem is something that allows you to connect to the outside world, to the internet. And a router allows you to build a network inside your home, okay? So if you have those two combined, great. But what's typical for a modem router is that it has one or two antennas that allows you to connect to wirelessly, right? And it has a number of network ports on it that allows you to plug in a network cable. Now, let's say you have one computer, one desktop computer, okay? You plug in a network cable into your modem router and you go directly to the network card in your PC and you're ready to rumble, right? You have a, a wired connection to your modem and if you have a, a wireless antenna on your PC, you can also work wirelessly like through Wi-Fi, okay? But you probably wouldn't want to because you got a cable connection and that's much faster. Now, next up is your laptop. Now, for a laptop, you typically want to work uh, wireless if you can, right? And LAN if you need speed. So again, here you can connect another network cable uh, to your uh, modem router, right? Or you can work wireless. And for your cell phone, it's wireless only because you can't plug in a network cable. Not that I know of anyway, right? So all of these things are communicating through this modem router, right? And that's basically your network, as in, if you're working on your laptop, you should be able to see your PC. And if you're working on your phone, you should be able to see your PC, your laptop, if everything is on at the same time and if everything's in the network, right? Okay, enough about that. What's that thing in the middle here? Well, that is a, a switch. And a switch is basically a hub that splits into multiple ports. So if you don't have enough uh, network holes in your modem router, if you will, you can run one cable to a switch and that will turn into now four cables, right? So you can basically extend the capacity of your um, modem router that way. And you don't really have to have one, but it's possible that you do. Okay, so that's how that works, all right? Now, when it comes to network attached storage, you want to have your NAS in your network somewhere. And there's a, an ideal place and a not so ideal place. Uh, let's say you're connecting your NAS directly uh, to your PC. If your PC is turned off, then the NAS is turned off as well and there's no access. And you need to be able to get network access to it because you want it to run 24 seven all the time accessible from any device, right? So that already tells you what the ideal uh, situation is. You want to have your NAS uh, as close as possible to your modem router, right? And if you connect it to your modem router, then it's always on, your NAS is always on, and the NAS is visible from any device. So you can access files through your phone, through your PC, through your laptop, all right? So that's the ideal setting there. And um, I said before that a NAS is a box of hard disk drives. Well, it's much, much more than that. And that's what we're gonna dive into right now. Here we go. All right, so now we have an understanding of what a network is and what a NAS is, but let's look at the specific specifications of the AS5404T, right? There's a lot to say here. Well, first of all, uh, when we talked about, or when I talked about a box of hard disk drives, and I said, well, this is a lot more than that. 
keep in mind that this has a built-in uh, Celeron CPU, right? So it has a processing unit that is built into this thing. Why? Well, because it has to handle a lot of information and a lot of data and, and a plan basically to manage your data. And that is in the form of RAID solutions, okay? Now it comes with four uh, M2 slots for uh, NVMe SSDs. What does that mean? Well, in the unit, there are four bays for your hard disk drives, right? Whether it's a three and a half inch or two and a half inch. So you have your four hard disk drives, but you also on top have four slots where you can click in four of these SSD drives. Now they are intended as kind of a buffer, right? Because SSDs are typically faster. So when you uh, write something uh, to your NAS, it will go a lot faster onto the buffering SSDs. And from there, it will be, be managed uh, through the CPU, of course, uh, to uh, get into the right place on the right disk in the NAS solution. Uh, but the cool thing is you can also allocate a lot of that memory as additional hard disk drive. So if you, for example, put in four two terabyte uh, M2s, then you have eight uh, terabyte additional memory, which is pretty neat. Now the unit comes with uh, four gigs of DDR4 RAM, but it can be expanded to 16. There are two slots, so you can uh, take out the four, put in two times eight, and then you have uh, 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM, which helps in the performance, obviously. Now on the back, there are uh, two uh, dual 2.5 gigabit ethernet ports. If you connect from your NAS to a uh, 2.5 gigabit capable switch, then you can have some uh, very, very fast uh, performance, right? Now uh, on the back end, there are uh, three USB 3.2 uh, Gen 2s uh, at a speed of 10 gigabits per second. And that is very convenient if you, for example, want to hook up external hard disk drives that you have lying around that you want to load onto your NAS, right? It also comes with an HDMI 2.0 uh, port. Um, the heat dissipation thermal vents, um, that's related to the design that you see on the top there. That looks very neat. And um, yeah, there's a lot of uh, enjoyment to be had with this NAS. It says enjoy download, upload and stream content with 4K transcoding. Well, uh, pretty much below, uh, pretty much straight under that, there's a logo of Plex. Now, if you don't know what Plex is, Plex is a, uh, an application that you can run. Uh, there's a whole suite of software and I'll get to that in a second that you install that manages all of this stuff and you can use um, all of these apps to your heart's content. And one of them is a Plex server, okay? Now, just to give you an idea what that looks like, right? I'll open my Plex server for a second here. And um, it's basically your personal Netflix, right? What you see in front of you are movies that are um, movies that I have on DVD, right? I um, I ripped them, so they're all legal uh, DVDs, right? They're mine. I bought them. I paid for them, but I decided to digitize them and to load them into my Plex server. Now, the cool thing is with this Plex server, um, I can watch on my smart TV, right, without having my PC turned on at all, right? I can just go to the Plex application on my smart TV because you can install it there as well. And I can treat this like as if it were a streaming service like Netflix. So that's how easy that is, right? Now, for a lot of people, that's a very important feature. And for me, it is for sure, because I'm a huge uh, movie nut. And one thing to add there, because you have the ability to access your uh, NAS remotely, let's say you're on vacation in, a, in a, a different country, right? If you have the access to a browser and you have internet, then you can access your NAS from there and you can actually watch your videos while you're there. 
how neat is that uh let's see one thing i forgot to mention it supports uh, wake up on lan and wake up on wan right local area network and wide area network basically saying that it can go into power save mode to save uh, energy but as soon as you do anything to activate the network it will wake up right let's see uh, what else we got here uh, okay, this is a little bit more about the content. So the four slots for the M2s, we talked about that. Easy content creation and storage, Adobe certified. Well, that means that the NAS uh, works seamlessly with a whole bunch of cloud solutions. So if that's your thing, if you, let's say, work with Adobe Cloud or with another cloud service, um, uh, 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 <clears throat> Uh, Asia Store is a partner of Adobe and uh, they allow you to do that, right? Uh, you can uh, live stream and you can actually uh, use your uh, NAS as a server, basically, right? Uh, we're not going to go into detail on that because it would take hours to explain everything, right? Uh, here you see that they're an official Adobe partner. Uh, something you can check out on the website. Here's a little bit more about the NAS Flash. Uh, let's see the CPU they were talking about here 2.9 gigahertz pretty sweet uh, let's see I think it's a 2 gigahertz up to okay I need to read up on that I'm not sure right anyway you can uh, upgrade the DDR4 RAM as I mentioned um, uh, the ports uh, I talked about that uh, will allow you to uh, stream very very fast which is nice um the raid solutions here's an example of a raid 5 where you see the speeds the read and write speeds um i will get into all of these raids and how that works this is kind of a top shot of the um the flash here so the uh, m2s uh you've got four slots you can insert them into and uh, yeah it looks something like that all right now, this is uh, where the meat is, I would say. When you have your NAS, you install uh, ADM, and that is basically your data management software, right? And it has tons and tons of applications, and you can use uh, any of them, some of them, up to you, right? But a lot of them are very, very cool. Uh, let's see, we got the USBs on the back, I talked about that. Uh, the look, yeah, it looks really sweet. Uh, you can store games. Let's see, NAS enormous capacity. Yeah, lots, lots of storage, for sure. Um, yeah, live streaming center. You can do that as well. Um, for media, of course, super, super important for me anyway. Um, yeah, it has a 10-bit 4K hardware decoding, so that's top notch. Now, um, let's talk about basically the reason why I got the NAS because this is all cool and it's all going to be a lot of fun but the meat of it is this as a 3D artist right you're storing your data your files your models your assets and also client files now um, when it comes to things like OneDrive and and all these different apps right um when you get up there in data so you're talking about terabytes it's costly and it's very very costly and you're paying per month right and you don't have the access to your files the way you do with a nas solution right uh you don't have that redundancy i mean yeah you could say well there's a backup service but how reliable is it because after all you're not the one doing it and it's external right so for me, it's critically important to have all my files uh, under my own management, uh, but also having a solid uh, redundancy solution for it. Um, that is, I would say, the single thing that uh, warrants to spend this kind of money on a solution, right? And when I say this kind of money, uh, let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, if you're looking to buy a unit like this and you want to populate it, let's say with four, I don't know, four eight terabyte drives and you're looking at four additional M2 SSDs and you want to upgrade your RAM, uh, I would say you're looking at ballpark maybe 1500 bucks, right? Now, 
you're probably going to say that's a lot of money, a lot of money if you're buying it just because you want to have your own movie server, right? Well, it's a lot more than that. It's a hell of a lot more than that. Uh, it's uh, ease of mind. It's redundancy for your data that you are guaranteed not to lose it. See it as an insurance policy, right? And depending on where your NAS is located, it could even be considered uh, as uh, off location. If you are concerned about the location, um, you know, that there's going to be a break in or a fire or whatnot, you can easily have a NAS um, uh, on a nearby location, right? And you can even have a NAS connected to a NAS. So it's endless. So that's, uh, I would say, the main reason why I have an S and all the other stuff is gravy, right? Let's see if we covered everything. So, uh, yeah, a lot of software to go through. And I'll show you that in a little bit, what that looks like. Um, yeah, surveillance, that's another cool thing. And I'm going to be doing that as well. Uh, what you can do if you have wireless surveillance cameras is you can work them on your NAS as well, right? So you can have the recordings saved on your NAS. Uh, you can retrieve them from your NAS and it supports, I believe, uh, up to four cameras for free. And if you want to upgrade that, you can. I think that's paid, but yeah, supports up to 44 camera channels. There you go. So if you, for example, have a business and you want a solution like that, consider that that is all built in, all right? Now, Dr. Asus store is basically, let's call it a disc doctor, right? Health checks, uh, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah, of course, tons and tons of mobile apps as well. Uh, here's the app central, just to give you an idea. And yeah, there's a three year warranty and there you have it. So yeah, a whole lot to consider. And I suggest you just take your time and check out the website and read up on all the specs, okay? Now, what I do need to check is the rate solutions because that's kind of a complex topic and it will help you to understand what type of drives you should buy uh, for your use and how you would set up your redundancy, right? So let's look at that next. Okay, so you decided to do the investment and get yourself a NAS, right? Well, what you want to make sure of is that your data is protected because that's the whole idea. Now, the funny thing is that um, RAID stands for a, a redundant array of inexpensive disks uh, or independent disks, but they're certainly not inexpensive, right? They're, they're pricey. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the various RAID solutions. Now, um, let's start with RAID 0, okay? Now, RAID 0 uses a technique called data striping or disk striping, I should say. And uh, what happens is when you write to your NAS, it spreads the data over multiple disks. So if you have two disks, it will spread it over these two disks, right? So the performance is good because it's writing faster. Now you need a minimum of two disks here. The problem with RAID 0 though is that there is no fault tolerance at all. If one disk fails then you probably lose all of your data. So I would not recommend it but it is something that exists, right? Okay now let's look at RAID 1. A RAID 1 solution uh, also requires a minimum of two disks, but it's a lot safer because the idea is that everything you write to your NAS is saved on, let's say, disk 1, and disk 2 is a mirror of disk 1. So if something happens with one of the two drives, then you still have your data on the other one. Now then we have the RAID 5 solution, and for the RAID 5 solution you need uh, three or more disks. And the difference here is that data is written with data and parity. And parity is something that is needed to recreate disk in case of a fault, right? Now, the thing is, uh, because it's written in parity, um, the whole solution becomes slightly slower, but you do have the protection in the sense that if one of the drives fails, then uh, you will still be able to work, right? Now, because the software environment has uh, like a disk doctor, if you will, 
if there are bad sectors found on uh, any of your disk, you will probably get a message saying that that's the case. And then it would uh, be time to think about replacing it, right? But if you are using new drives, then hopefully that will take a long while before that happens. Right, then we have a RAID 6 solution. And uh, that's also uh, often used in uh, enterprise situations, right? It's pretty much identical to RAID 5, uh, but it's even more robust because it will uh, have two disks that can go down and it will still be operational. So in RAID 5, if one fails, you're still good. In RAID 6, if two disks fail, then you are still okay, right? And then finally, we have RAID 10 solution. And that's kind of a combination of RAID 1 and 0. So instead of RAID 10, you could say RAID 1 plus 0. And it combines the mirroring of RAID 1 and the striping of RAID 0. That's kind of how that works. All right, so we talked about quite a lot so far, right? What's a NAS? How does it work? All that kind of stuff. What goes in a NAS and so forth and so on. Now, before we dive into this software platform that we're looking at, let's talk about the reasoning behind getting a NAS, right? Now, so far for the last couple of years, well, actually more than a couple of years, I've been working with external USB drives, right? And whenever I had a meeting with a client, I would have to go through the files, pick and choose the ones that I want to take with me, put it on my external USB drive, get it into my laptop bag, go to the client, take it out, hook it up, transfer them to the laptop. You know, you get the whole idea, right? Hopefully having all the files there that I need and uh, yeah, kind of being embarrassed while you're sitting with the client and they're waiting for you to, uh, you know, run the data through your little USB cable, right? Now, it was time for me to make a major upgrade. Now, um, the total cost here what we're looking at for this NAS, right? I think this NAS is about 600 bucks. Uh, I put three, uh, four terabyte drives in there. They were about 120 each, right? So we're talking about nine, couple of SSD drives, one terabyte each and some RAM, ballpark thousand bucks, right? Now, you're probably going to say, well, that's a lot of money. Yes, it's a lot of money, but looking at the six or seven uh, USB drives on my desk, that was a lot of money as well. But what are the benefits? Well, the benefits is, first of all, security. I have a RAID solution set up, so if something happens to a drive, you know, it will be picked up by another drive. And in the future, I'm going to add a fourth drive, so I'll have, I'll have two redundancy drives, but that's for a later date, right? So security of my data, because that's crucial. Second, speed. And third, accessibility. I can access my data anywhere as long as I have an internet connection, right? The software platform that we're looking at right now allows you to do that. Not only can I access my 3D uh, files for a client or whatnot, but if I feel like it, I can go to my Plex Media server right here, just as an example. And I can watch a movie because these are literally my movies. I uh, scanned in my uh, DVDs and because I was never using them anymore. And now I can just stream them like I were in Netflix. And I even went so far as to calling this Shaw Flix. Why not, right? Okay, so that's one thing you can do. Now, what else is going on here? Here is, this is basically your disk management platform and has a whole bunch of apps, right? If you go to the app central here and go to all apps, these are all apps you can choose from, add on, play with, and so forth. There's a whole world going on, right? Now, let's look at the specs a little bit. Here's my storage manager. I want to make sure that my drives are doing okay, that they're not faulty, anything like that. And here you can see the drive that I'm using is the AS5405T. We already looked at that. I got three drives populated. And under volume, you can see the, or under drive, sorry, you can see what type of drives there are in there. I added two M.2 drives and I upgraded the RAM, right? Now let's look at the volume. Right now I got one RAID 5 solution set up and it's uh, populated 16.48%. 
The reason why I got six terabytes free out of 7.21 is because um, two drives are for data basically and one is for redundancy. Uh, if you look at the drive overview, let's give that a second. Here we go. I got drive one, two, and three. They're 3.64 terabytes each. You can see the temperature, which looks all good. And I got two of these uh, M.2 drives. And then uh, if we look at the overview, you'll see that everything is in green and everything is okay. Healthy, right? Good, good. Okay, so yeah, that's basically what I wanted to share. That's my reasoning behind this Asus store. I am a huge fan of this software platform, I have to say. The install was very, very easy. It's literally uh, plugging in the drives. And there are also tons and tons of videos online about how to do everything, right? So that's what I want to share with you guys. If you are in a similar position and you are considering a, um, a network uh, attached storage setup like this, I can highly recommend it, right? Okay, that's it for me. A bit of a long video this time, but nevertheless, I hope it was really helpful. If you have any questions, of course, you can let me know in the comments and I'll try to help you if I can. And that said, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye. Thank <laughs> you.